Hi, everyone. Aaron here for Zolotac, and yesterday, Apple released macOS Sequoia 15 Beta 2. This update finally brings screen mirroring and a few other changes, so I thought we'd go over what's new. It came in at 3.33 gigabytes on my M2 MacBook Air 15-inch. Let's go ahead and close this. We'll take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to About This Mac. Then we'll click on the Mac OS 15.0, and then it gives us the build number of 24A5279H. This just lets you know you're on the latest version. Now, as far as the first new feature, like I mentioned, we now have iPhone screen mirroring. Now, if you have it down here in your recents, it will show up from the previous beta. You could search for it, but it didn't work. If you're not seeing it there, go into your launch pad, go ahead and click on it. And then there's a little bit of a setup. The setup that you go through is basically this screenshot here where it says your iPhone on your Mac and tells you a little bit about it. Then you continue, you allow access on both devices and you're ready to go. Now you'll see already it says iPhone in use and where it's saying iPhone in use while well, my iPhone is actually on and unlocked when it's unlocked like this. It won't work, but if I go ahead and lock it or I put it on a dock and standby, it will then switch. I'll have to unlock my iPhone with face ID or my passcode. Once I do that, we can go ahead and click try again and it should connect. It takes just a moment. There we go. And then on the iPhone, it gives us a message that says the iPhone is being used by MacBook air 15. And then it goes to the lock screen. You can also put it on standby mode. And now we have full access to our iPhone. We can move it around just like this. So if we move our cursor up toward the outside or the upper edge of the iPhone itself, it expands and gives us some options. So you'll see here, if we click on this, it's not really doing anything. We click on the other one. We can go to our task manager or our app switcher rather. Then we can go into maybe a different app, just click on it and you'll see it's pretty fast. There is a little bit of lag. We click on the home button to go home, but we can go in and then we can scroll through it just with two fingers on the Mac as well. So just like you would use it on your iPhone, you can do that, click on it, and then we're back to the main screen and it works pretty well. It's fairly fast. And again, we can just move it around wherever we'd like. So it's really great that you have that. There's also a way if you want to switch between different phones by going into settings. If we go into our settings pane here, let's just move this over here within settings, we go over to desktop and dock and within desktop and dock, we'll scroll down a little bit and then we'll go to the widget section and it says iPhone in here. You can actually switch between the versions. Now why it's under widgets. I'm not sure. Maybe it sees it as a widget, but you can switch between any phone that's updated to iOS 18 beta two. So switch between those. If you'd like, you have that option. And then also we have some notification options. We now will receive notifications from the iPhone directly on our Mac. I'm not sure this is working hundred percent just yet, but you'll see under notifications, it says allow notifications from the iPhone. And then you can summarize them and you have all of your normal options as well. So as those notifications come in, you'll actually, instead of not just seeing them here, you'll see them on your iPhone as well. Everything will be synced and you'll have information for that. You can click on them and then they'll open up on the iPhone itself. So super nice. You can swap between different screens here. You can do whatever you would do on the iPhone, but just do it from the actual Mac itself. If we want to pull down and go into search, we can type Apple from our keyboard here and type directly on the iPhone. So it's super nice to be able to use this. Just have it off to the side when you need something quickly, set a timer, whatever you want. If you don't want to do it on the Mac, there is one exception though, is when you're trying to use things wirelessly, if you have an Apple vision pro, it won't work when you're using Apple vision pro at the same time, mirroring your Mac as it doesn't allow the connection. It actually says unable to connect continuity screen. MacBook air 15 is currently using sidecar, even though I was connected to an Apple vision pro. Apparently you can get this to work if you're using Using a developer connection on your Apple vision pro directly to your Mac, then it actually only has the one wireless connection to the iPhone. So that gives you an idea of what it's like to use iPhone mirroring. If we go to our system settings, go to accessibility, go to audio and scroll down. We have headphone accommodations. If we maybe connect AirPods pro two, you'll need something like that or the latest generation that supports it. Once they're connected, we can turn this on and then go to custom audio setup. We now have headphone audio customization for phone calls, movies, and music and customized transparency mode. We'll click continue. Then we've got more information where this will set it up. 
Once you go through the settings, it will customize it for you with those headphone accommodations. Back within settings, if we go down to appearance, within appearance, if we switch to dark mode, we have some indication that Apple may also bring those dark mode icons that we have in iOS 18 to macOS 15. You'll see the iPhone mirroring icon switches to dark mode, both here and in the dock. So if we switch back and forth, you can see it down here. So maybe we'll get those new dark mode icons after all on macOS, but we don't really know, but that's the only indication of it. If we click on our name at the top where our Apple account is within iCloud, it says subscriber iCloud plus they've changed this from the previous beta, just like on iPhone, but it's something that's a little odd as it's only matching what we have in news. Let me know if you like that they've actually put this little icon here, or if you'd prefer something else, it's very minor, but just something that's a little different when it comes to the applications themselves installing, there's good news in the apps downloaded will no longer need more storage than the final app size pretty much to install. Typically it was almost double when installing from the app store so it can install everything, then it would delete that information. But now it should just be basically the size of the app with a small amount of storage acting as a buffer. So that's something that's been updated in macOS Sonoma as a whole within our launch pad. If we go to other Apple has updated the chess game as well. This was updated with beta one, but they've updated it a little bit. You can also move around it if you want to, and just change the way it looks. But in general, this is something that's been updated, which seems a little bit unnecessary necessary, but it's nice to see the attention to detail. Now, as far as bugs go, this update actually has a lot of bugs. In fact, the first time I booted it up, I had to restart it three times just to get things such as messages and mail to open. So at this point, I would probably recommend you don't put it on your main device. This is actually a secondary device, so I can test this out. I would not put it on your main production device unless you actually have a backup just in case. So if maybe you have some crucial work you need to do on it, whether that's something like logic pro or final cut or some other app, Adobe or anything else, I would probably hold hold off while those apps will probably work. It does seem to be quite buggy. If we take a look at the release notes within the release notes, you'll see there's a lot of different things that have been resolved. Everything from accessibility to AR kit to backup to camera and many other issues. So they definitely have made a lot of progress on this one, but it still seems quite buggy, but you'll see as we continue down notification resolutions, there's still some known issues, but lots of things that they've fixed. I'll link this in the description. If you want to check it out yourself as all of these notes are public facing. So be sure to check those out if you're interested. And if you are having bugs and running the beta, make sure that your issue isn't listed here as a known issue before you report it. And if you do have something that's not listed, make sure you report it in the feedback app. As far as overall performance, well, that seems to be just fine. Other than the bugs I mentioned already with different apps opening or crashing, but everything else seems to be fairly stable battery life. I'm not really sure as, as it's only been on this Mac for about a half a day, but if we go to battery, you'll see over the last 10 days yesterday, I used it off battery for quite a while and used about 25% of the battery. So in general, it seems to be doing okay. My battery health on this is at 100% and this is an M2 MacBook air 15 inch. So I use this quite often to do notes, connect to vision pro check that out and everything else. So let me know if there's anything else you found in Mac OS 15 beta two or Mac OS Sequoia beta two. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.